Hey, how y'all doing? It's Craig here again. What we got here is that steel blower, the SS, SH, I believe it's an 86. It's been so long since I've had this thing out. Let me look here. Yeah, it's the SH86C because it has a chopper blade in it. So we're ready to reassemble the short block here. Um, I'm going to do this as a base gasket delete. I know it's just a little cylinder, but I mean, it'll give it just a little more kick to it. Um, I like using the Ultimate Black from Permatex on these clamshells. I've already installed the piston. I've already made sure <laughs> that it's assembled right. I've just got a couple nuts on the case bolts to, to hold this center block in place. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to goop this up. I'll probably have to dig this out. Yeah. That's the only bad thing about getting it in a tube like this versus the other one. The tube itself is still pliable. I can push on the tube and it'll it'll squeeze down a little bit. Probably should have checked this before I started filming. This way you guys can see some of the issues that I go through. I got a trash can right there. Uh, we're, we're down into the good stuff now. So I'll get just a little bit out here. I'm just going to use my screwdriver. Put a thin layer. It's plenty cold enough, so I don't have to be in no big hurry with this today. Make sure you keep the passage open right there for your pulse. That's your, your pulse line passage right there. Again, I'm not putting a whole heck of a lot on here, just a just a little film. And I'll come back and I'll do the top side of that also. Some of these passages aren't used for anything, but I'm not sure which ones are which, so I just go around and open them all right back up. Like I said, got plenty of time here. It's, it's cool enough that's not going to set up very fast anyway. These are brand new rings for this. Of course it's child proof. Well I guess I'm trying to open the wrong side. Might, might work if I open up the right side. And these are steel rings. There's the part number. 4144-2. Four one four four dash zero three four dash three zero zero zero. It's a 
34 millimeter by 1.2 millimeter. Doesn't matter which position these go in, you just have to make sure. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little tab on either side. You just have to make sure that that tab goes around the pins, the locating pins that are in the piston. And these pins are on the top of the ring land, so I'll have to make sure that I put them on right. I've got one pin here and one pin here. Now let's hope that I can put these on without breaking them. There's that one. Make sure I get the tabs down. Goes on like that. There's that one. Now there's an issue right there. That ring's a little tight. I got a screwdriver right here. What I'm doing is just, I thought I got all the carbon out of these pist out of this ring lane here on this piston. Maybe I didn't. So we'll try this again. Tabs are down. There we go. Might have been just a small piece of dirt in there or something. I still don't like how it's, it still feels like it's hanging here on the back side a little bit maybe. I'm just running this screwdriver flat on the flats of the ring land. I really don't feel nothing. When I took the old rings off, I actually broke one. So that's what I used to clean these ring lands out with. It was a broken ring. Try it again. Tabs are down. And I like that. That's not hanging at all. So that's good there. There could have been just little pieces of dirt in there. I thought I had it cleaned out. I unblasted it with brake clean and blowed it with compressed air just right before I turned the video camera on. It could, like I said, it could have just been a, a small piece of carbon still in there. Um, I thought I was pretty thorough getting it cleaned out, but obviously I wasn't. Okay. 
Put a little bit of oil here in this cylinder now. It isn't going to be a lot. Just a light coat. Maybe just a tad more than that. And all I'm using, 3-in-1 oil. There, that ought to do. Now, let's see if I can't get this on here. Make sure I put this cylinder on right. I got black marks. There it is right there. So the cylinder goes on like so. No pins on the exhaust side. Pin on the intake side so. Let me stop this. I'm going to get a compressor for this one. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Get my ring compressor out here. Let's see if I can't get this. doesn't even go down enough. Let me get the smaller one out. Find my marks again. Okay, there they are. Doesn't look like I got into the stuff very much. Maybe just a little touch. Take my bolts out here. Now I'm really getting into it. Just checking my looks good to me. There's that. Now I gotta seal up the bottom end here. that over. There's supposed to be a little spaghetti seal, just a little rubber o-ring seal that goes in these slots. Still doesn't even list that in their IPL. So when you go to put this stuff on here, you got to be a little more liberal. Make sure you get plenty down in that slot there. So what I do is just kind of drag it tight 
to force it down in there. And then I'll go back and then skim it. because you definitely don't want it to leak. I'm going to get down in these seal pockets also. So we're going to set this crank down in here. I'm going to put the piston in the top dead center. I'm not going to seat the seals all the way in quite yet. I'll wait till I get the, the cover on it. And once I get it kind of snug where I can push them seals up square, then I'll do that. Clean off my screwdriver, it's good. That's what it ought to look like. Now, one last thing that I like to do, I just like to make sure that them two case halves are going to seal right at the joint where that seal is. So I like to take just a little extra and on an angle just put a little bit at each corner of these seals. Do you have to do that? Probably not. But I think that's just extra insurance. Most of it's going to press out or, or squeeze out anyway. Okay. That is some messy stuff. So let's... Get that out of the way. take the cover. Remember I marked this so there's one mark or that's just a, a permanent marker is all that is. Uh, where's, there's my other mark right there. So I gotta find my marks. There they are. Put them together just like so. I don't lock tight these case bolts because they've got serrations underneath the head that actually bites into the aluminum to lock them.
I think this will fit down over there. Yep. Now all I'm going to do is just tap them seals on down in. Clean all the excess off here. All this is just a deep well three quarter inch half inch drive and it's the same size as that seal. Got me a rubber mallet. That one's seated home. That one's seated home. Now in a cross pattern I'll go ahead and torque these. Okay. See the, you can see the squish out all the way around it just a little bit. Top and bottom. So I'll come back around and That's going to sit overnight. Let that cure up. I guess before we do anything else, let's make sure this and it does. We could go ahead and check squish right now if you wanted to. If you're kind of curious. here. Be nice to know what it was before, but get the right amount here. There we go. It's going to be fairly big. I mean, I do have a little resistance there when I was turning it over. Cold, my calipers take a little while to warm up here. Don't know if you can see that, but it is all zeros. Thirty-nine thousands. If I get right out on the very tip of it, actually 26 right out on the very tip. If I go in a little bit, there's about 37 and a half. And there's about 37. So if I come right on, on the very tip of it, twenty-nine and a half right there. So depending on where you measure at, that squish is probably beveled a little bit, I would say. Or it might just be because I just compressed it one time instead of two or three. But we got a squish somewhere 
in the thirty to thirty to forty thousandths range. It'll run. Okay. I know this thing's been going on for quite a while now. So um I'll go ahead and stop it here. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed.